Hey guys, today is all about seeing the most incredible stories of survival. These aren't your typical stories, but extremely weird stories where something weird happened that was extremely unexpected and hasn't really happened again. Let's get started. But first, give this video a quick like. It really helps me out and uh, maybe consider subscribing as well. In one of the most incredible plane survival moments, you have the story of British Airway Flight 5390, which was flying from Birmingham, England to Malaga in Spain. The captain on that day on June 10, 1990 was Timothy Lancaster, who had over 11,000 flight hours. The co-pilot was Alistair Atchison, with 7,500 flight hours. The plane took off without any issues, and as the plane climbed to about 17,300 feet, the pilots took off their shoulder harnesses, but only Lancaster took off his lap seatbelt. Air steward Nigel Ogden then walked into the cockpit, and that's when disaster struck, as the plane's windscreen panel on Lancaster's side blew open and he was quickly sucked out of the plane upon decompression. Lancaster's feet luckily got stuck on the flight controls and that's when Ogden quickly grabbed onto his belt and held onto him, with his full torso out of the plane and just his feet remaining inside. The autopilot disengaged causing the plane to start descending and the decompression caused the deck door to blow inward and started pushing the throttle forwards so they were descending at high speeds. The co-pilot and other stewards managed to move the door and take control of the plane and they descended quickly to a safe level as the plane didn't have oxygen for the passengers. Two other stewards changed out holding on to Lancaster as Ogden was experiencing exhaustion and frostbite. Everybody in the cabin thought that the pilot was dead but the co-pilot didn't want them to release him in case his body hit something on the plane and caused more serious damage. Eventually, the co-pilot was able to hear the control tower through all the wind and was given an emergency landing authorization. Upon landing, they were extremely surprised to see that Lancaster was actually alive and survived with frostbite, bruising, shock and fractures to his right arm, wrist and thumb. The co-pilot and air stewards all received awards for their incredible heroism to save Lancaster's life and all the passengers. Joan Murray started to have a really extreme passion when she was 47 years old, and that was skydiving. By this time, she had already made 35 successful jumps. She wasn't a pro, but she was very experienced. On September 25th, 1999, she was scheduled to have another jump in South Carolina in the United States. She was ready to go, and as the plane reached the jumping altitude, she took the jump. She fell for 45 seconds, and about 5,000 feet above the ground, she pulled back to deploy her parachute. Nothing happened. She panicked a little, but that's what the backup is for, and it did work. Unfortunately, she soon after started spinning out of control and her reserves started getting tangled until eventually, at 700 feet above the ground, it completely deflated and she started falling fast at 80 miles an hour right into the ground. Onlookers could only watch as she slammed into the ground. Emergency responders immediately rushed to her and she was taken to the hospital still alive, which surprised everybody as her right side was completely crushed and her teeth fillings had been knocked out. As the doctors worked on her, they noticed a ton of little red bumps on her body. It turns out that Joan had additional injuries as she had over 200 fire ant bites all over her body. You might think, damn, she just fell over 700 feet at full speed and now she lands on an ant hill? Well, it turns out that the fire ants released a venom called solenopsin, which actually helped Joan as it stimulated her nervous system and kept her heart beating. Incredibly, after spending two weeks in a coma, getting 20 reconstructive surgeries, getting metal implanted all over her body, and having 17 blood transfusions, Joan made a full recovery and was incredibly able to walk from her wheelchair to the car upon leaving the hospital. The doctors even wrote miracle on her file. She returned to work in 2001 and soon after made her 37th skydiving jump. Talk about bravery and getting over your trauma. Igor Vorospitsin is a fisherman from Russia and on a date in August in 2014, he was traveling to his usual fishing spot, but there was a beast on the prowl. A giant bear was hunting him. The bear suddenly appeared and quickly pounced on him. The bear smashed him on his back and quickly was on top of him, mauling him all over. The thing or person that saved him was actually Justin Bieber. No, Bieber wasn't out in a remote area of Russia trying to fish. This man actually had a Bieber song as a ringtone. It turns out that his granddaughter loaded the ringtone as a joke and now it was playing loudly in the middle of the forest. The song was so bad that the bear considered it torture and just started running away. 
this man survived because of a joke and a terrible song. In actuality, the bear probably ran away because of the loud noises that he just couldn't figure out where they were coming from. The man survived with cuts and bruises around his face and chest after getting help from other fishermen in the area. In 1971, Julian Kopke was living in Peru as a child of German scientists who were working in Peru. On Christmas Eve, she was set to fly back from Lima to the research station in Panguana with her mother. They scheduled a flight with Lanza, an airline with a poor track record, and the father warned them against booking with this airline. 25 minutes after taking off, the plane was struck by lightning and it soon after started disintegrating. Julianne and her mom were sitting together in a row of three, but when the plane broke apart, Julianne found herself still attached to her seat, but the seat was no longer attached to the plane. She was flying through the air alone as her mother was no longer with her. She fell from two miles up in the air and her row of seats worked as a parachute and also as the object that broke her fall as she fell through the trees into the Amazon jungle. This tragedy could not have happened to a more prepared person as she was the daughter of a biologist and an ornithologist who was raised in the forest and learned all types of survival techniques. Incredibly, she did not have life-threatening injuries, the most serious being a torn ligament in her knee, but she could still walk and she also had a broken collarbone. The biggest difficulty was that she was nearsighted and had actually lost her glasses. She incredibly survived for 11 days in the jungle alone as she was the only survivor. She survived by eating candy that she got from the plane crash site. Eventually, after walking for days in a stream where it was safer being away from venomous snakes, she came upon a boat and a small campsite, but nobody was there. She stayed there for the night and miraculously in the morning, the men returned and treated her wounds and took her back to civilization. She had survived a plane crash, a two mile fall and 11 days alone in the forest. After recovering, she helped with searching for the wreckage and they eventually recovered her mother's body on January 12th. Incredibly, the mom had actually survived for a couple of days as well and Kipke dreaded to think what her last days were like. In May 1996, Beck Weathers wanted to conquer Mount Everest, so he hired adventure consultants, which was guided by Rob Hall. Unfortunately for Weathers, he had radio keratotomy surgery recently, and the high altitude and overexposure to UV radiation caused him to go blind when he was on the balcony, which is 27,000 feet up the 29,000 foot tall Everest. He was told that he had to wait there by Hall, who would help another client summit, and he would come back to help him down the mountain. Hall never returned as he had actually died helping the other man summit the unforgiving mountain. This season ended up being one of the deadliest in Everest history. Eventually, Michael Groom came and he helped Weathers down the mountain, but soon a blizzard hit and both of them, along with 10 other climbers, found themselves unable to find Camp 4. The blizzard took hours to dissipate, at which point half the group went out searching for help. Weathers and four others stayed back, but somehow, Weathers got up in the middle of the night and in his delirium yelled out some nonsense and disappeared into the night as he fell into the snow. During the night, a Russian guide rescued the rest of the team, but when he took a look at Weathers, he deemed him beyond help and left him there to die. The next morning, a doctor was sent to rescue Weathers and another Japanese climber named Namba. He declared that Namba was beyond help and upon checking on Weathers with his frostbitten extremities and face, he said that he was as close to death and still breathing as any patient he had ever seen. Thus, he abandoned him. He was left behind to die for the second time. By some miracle, he woke up from the hypothermic coma and realized where he was, and although his hands and feet were hard as porcelain thanks to the frostbite, he walked back to camp all alone. He had already been declared dead, but now he is there in front of everyone, walking and talking. He was rushed to the hospital in what became the highest rescue mission ever completed. He ended up losing his nose, his right arm, fingers on his left hand, and several pieces of his feet, but he is very much alive. Planes are definitely the safest way of traveling, but hearing some of these stories might make you think about taking that next trip, because what are the chances that you'll land on an anthill and it'll save your life? Thanks for watching this video guys, make sure to come back next time.